As I neared the stronghold's inner sanctum, a strange sensation crept over me. An indescribable feeling of displacement, a sense of vertigo, as reality itself appeared to warp and bend around me. The disturbance seemed to emanate from the sanctuary's furthest chapel. As I cautiously approached, the sense of dislocation intensified with each step. So this was the tomb of the beloved King William the Just, beatified here as the martyr and catalyst of Mobius's crusade. I was reminded of Cain's journey as a fledgling vampire, how Mobius coerced him to travel back in history and assassinate William, thus igniting a genocidal hatred of vampires among the citizens of Nosgoth. And here I discovered the source of the displacement, the soul reaver itself, laid out like a holy relic, and broken, apparently in the battle between William and Cain. I had not thought such a thing was possible, until, of course, Cain shattered the blade against me when he tried to strike me down. Thus, the captive spirit inhabiting the reaver was released, and binding itself to me, became my symbiotic weapon. And so the Reaver met its former self, still imprisoned in this corporeal shell. I watched, mesmerized, as the Wraith Blade uncoiled itself and snaked down the length of the physical blade. Embracing its twin, its mirror self, the Reaver's long dormant spirit was now fully aroused, and for the first time, I felt the true presence of this other entity, willful, ravenous, and deranged from thousands of years of imprisonment. The Reaver was now in command, and I, now merely its helpless host, felt my soul being leeched to restore the blade. But the Reaver knew better than to destroy its host, and just as I neared the brink of oblivion, the blade released its hold on me. As I recovered, I realized we were now bound together in a fragile alliance. The Reaver no longer merely my symbiotic weapon, but a sentient parasite competing for control. What have you done to me, Mobius? Is this your trap? How mine? Don't forget it was Cain who led you here, not I. While you curse me, the only soul in Nosgoth ready to guide and assist you, Cain laughs at our folly and revels in your dismay. These blades, now coiled in sinister embrace, have inspired terror in the hearts of creatures far more durable than you, old man. Bound together as they are, I can only imagine what they could do to your soul's fragile shell. Raziel, I beg you to stay your hand. This was none of my doing. I have sought only to aid you in your righteous quest. Why, you are trembling, Mobius. Has your confidence abandoned you? You seem to have made a fatal error by leaving your precious staff behind. Is that where all your courage comes from? Listen to me, Raziel. You don't know what you're doing. I have taken an enormous risk by appearing here before you, so defenseless, yet eager to prove my good intentions. If there's anything left of the Seraphim in you, you won't do this. While you threaten me, your true enemy eludes you. Don't concern yourself with Cain, old man. He'll join you in hell soon enough. As you said, death comes for us all. Yes. The wheel of fate demands it. What did you say? The wheel of fate. The inexorable cycle of death and rebirth to which all men are compelled. We serve the same God, Raziel. To strike me down would be striking God's own attendant. And I don't believe even you would take that risk. I tire of your games, Mobius. Now that I know you fear me, I needn't concern myself with you. Cain is waiting for me. Go then, Raziel. 
Seek Cain out and destroy him in the name of the one God we both serve. You, who were once a seraphim priest, murdered, profaned, destroyed, and reborn again from his mercy, you are now most powerfully equipped to be his agent, his instrument of restoration and retribution. My own vengeance is motivation enough. By my soul, you almost had me, my little blue assassin. But that'll be the one and only chance you get. I assure you of that. So this was the legendary Janos Audrin, reputed to have been the most ancient and diabolical vampire to have ever existed. According to folklore, he lived high in the cliffs of Nosgoth's northern mountains and preyed mercilessly on the defenseless villages below. His reign of terror ended when the Saraphan finally hunted him down and tore his throbbing heart from his still living body. This relic came to be known as the Heart of Darkness and was supposedly imbued with the power to restore vampiric unlife. The Saraphan therefore guarded it carefully lest the heart fall into the hands of their enemies. But I wondered, could Janos Audrin truly have been as monstrous as depicted here? Or was this merely artistic license by the Saraphan, who sought to lionize themselves by demonizing their darkest enemy? Strange how my history came full circle. This chapel, I realized, was a memorial to my former Saraphan brethren and myself. All of us martyred here, and then so cruelly profaned by Cain when he imposed his gift on our noble corpses. For the first time, I beheld the image of my Saraphan self memorialized here among my fallen comrades. It tortured me to see how noble and pure I had been, and what a vile phantasm I had become, and a profound sense of injury, of loss and betrayal welled up in me, so overwhelming I could barely contain it. All I wanted at this moment was to find Cain and destroy him. I emerged, and for the first time beheld Nosgoth in its former glory. The land overflowed with abundant life and vitality, and I knew with certainty then that the world I had left behind was nothing more than the corpse of Nosgoth, a lifeless husk bled dry by the corruption of Cain's parasitic empire. This was the fragile world Cain sacrificed to preserve his own petty life and ambition, heedless of the profound cost. The sight only deepened my resolve. I sensed that the pillars lay to the northwest, and if Cain truly waited to confront me there, I would not disappoint him. <laughs> 